Windsor is a vibrant, dynamic community with a wide array of intriguing businesses and interesting people. See what new businesses are coming to town. Hear about restaurants you haven't been to before. Learn the latest tips and tricks of technology. Find out what's happening around town. Get it all here on Windsor Today. Hi, I'm Jane Garibay, Executive Director of the Windsor Chamber of Commerce. And I'm Marty McMahon, President of the Chamber of Commerce. And welcome to Windsor Today. We're hosting it today from Northwest Park and we're standing in front of a Lon Pelton original. Uh, there's a lot to do up here at the park that we want to tell you about. Um, over to directly behind um, our camera is the warming shed and right now there's some daycare going on there but in the winter you can come and cross-country ski and get some hot cider so that's a great facility. Also at the park there's the Gordon Taylor Tobacco Museum and the John Luddy Tobacco Archives that's run by the Tobacco Valley uh, or Connecticut T Tobacco Museum and uh, Marion Nielsen will give you tours of that museum. It's got a, a lot about the agricultural history of Windsor and it's I highly suggest you come. Also we have the Nature Center here uh, with animals and, and different wildlife from uh, the park as well as the animal barn uh, with chickens and ducks and all you'd ever want, right? Absolutely. Um, what I'd like to do now is talk about our trivia question from last episode. Uh, the trivia question was, what classic film starring Troy Donahue and Carl Malden was filmed here in Windsor? And the answer is the movie Parish, which is about a large tobacco baron taking out all the small tobacco farms. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good movie and has a lot of uh, great locations. They even use some of the Loomis Chafee kids as uh, extras. So um, we'll have the winner of that trivia question on our next episode. Also here at the park, uh, there's a uh, tobacco shed that's been converted to a picnic area and people can have family reunions and uh, picnics there. Can businesses also like rent it out or? That's right, you can rent it out for your business and uh, as a matter of fact as we speak Hamilton Standard is having their uh, company picnic here as we speak. That's great, we're lucky to have this facility. Mm -hmm. um, also coming up is the Northwest Park Fair. That's right, on September 30th from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock will be the fair. And uh, Jane, tell us about your past experiences with the fair. Well, I think we've come to the fair almost every year. I love it because it is truly a country fair with that flavor. And you have, um, they used to have the cow chips uh, contest. They still have scarecrow contest um, for veggies, cooking, quilts, just a real old fashioned country fair with lots to do for the whole family. Great. This year they're gonna have lots of activities. They're gonna be auctioning off box lunches uh, from local dignitaries. They're going to have pony rides. They're going to have a pumpkin chucking. I got to get my baseball arm ready. And they're going to have an egg drop. The, the fair is looking for obviously folks to come, but they're also looking for volunteers and sponsors. So if you'd like information on the fair, please go to www.northwestpark.org. Mm -hmm. Now let's find out a little bit more about the animal barn. Okay, let's go on over, Marty. Jane and I are sitting here in front of the animal barn. It seems like a good time to go into our trivia question. Inside the barn is a burrow that cries. And so our trivia question is, what is the name of the burrow? And we're hoping you'll come up here at Northwest Park to find out. Now the way the trivia contest works is once you have that answer, you need to go to the Windsor Chamber website, click on trivia question, and put your answer in there. If you get it correct, we'll put your name in for a drawing for Chamber gift certificates, a $25 value, good for 45 different businesses in town. Now, so with some community events, Jane. Yes, Marty. Um, don't forget to take your guided evening kayak tour. There's one going out on September 12th and one on September 19th from Long River Canoe and Kayak. It's a guided tour of the Farmington. Um, it's only $25 per kayaker, and you can get more information again off our website. But don't miss; it's a great trip. We also have a pre-Christmas salesman sample sale, and that's one of our Could chamber you say members. That three times fast? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> pre-Christmas salesman sample sale, and that's a Hoy self storage. Mm -hmm. um, and what he does is he has a salesman that rents spots from him in the storage units, and they're selling off their samples that okay. they use for sales. And I know some have our sports, and there's just all kinds of different things. So they really are new. They're not used. They just were sales samples. Okay. And that's on September 9th, and that's going to be a great um, event. We also have our business after hours on September 20th. 
and that's going to be at Prudential Realty on Bloomfield Avenue. And if you remember the one last year, that's the one they do with um, Bloomfield. Do you remember yeah, the restaurant? Lots of great food. <laughs> yeah, Tuscan Twins. Um, so it's free to any chamber member, and it's five dollars if someone else wants to come in and visit and network and see what's going on. We also have Creative Fibers, which is our yarn shop on Quantic Avenue, Laura McSweeney. And from September 20th to October 1st, they're having a Plassard Trunk Show, which is a brand name of yarn. And you get 10% off, and she has great classes and all kinds of interesting things in there. It's a very unique shop. That's really fun. Yeah, it does. Do we have something on golf tournaments? Boy, we got some uh, golf tournaments. Yeah. Got three tournaments coming up. On September 11th, the Windsor Cops will be having their golf tournament and that's their 23rd annual. Uh, the third annual golf tournament for the benefit of Allied Enfield Stars will be held on September 17th. And the 12th annual William J. Seelig Memorial Golf Tournament will be held on September 18th. Information on all three of these terms can be found on our website. Also coming up, uh, the Windsor Fife and Drum Corps will be having their annual mustard and parade on September 9th, and that begins at 11 a.m., the parade. Also on September 11th, the Town of Windsor will be hosting a Walk of Light Community Remembrance and that will be held at 7 p.m. up on the Town Green. And finally on September 12th, the Windsor Palette and Brush Club will be hosting an oil painting demonstration and that will be at the L.P. Wilson Community Center from 7.15 to 9.30. Everyone is invited to watch as creative artists at work. You know, we have so much going on, Jane. Where should people go to get information? Right. Um, please go to the Chamber website at www.windsorcc.org. Not only can you see what events are happening in town, but you can also add your group's event there. And you just press um, Add New Event, and you can just put it in yourself, and then it comes to us. We do review it before it goes out, but it's just a great place to know when you want to plan an event so that you're not conflicting with someone else, what's going on. Um, just a great, great uh, way to get the information out. Great. Well, we're very excited being up here at Northwest Park. We hope you'll all visit it. There's plenty of things to do here, including trails. And uh, uh, speaking of trails, uh, there's the Freedom Trail Run coming up in September, sponsored by the AME Zion Church. And we're going to be heading there next to talk to uh, folks from their church to find out how that, what that's all about. Hi, I'm Adam Gutchen. I'm here presenting Business Beat, and we are standing in the kitchen of First Town Square, formerly known as the Rappaport Building. To my right is Jim Walsh, and uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about, this used to be a factory, there would certainly no countertops in there. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the building? Sure. Uh, approximately 1875, the, the building was built for a, uh, a gun factory, Building A, and then it was um, added onto in 1900, uh, Building B, and then Building C was added on in 1920. Now this building, um, it's right behind the train station, for those who don't know, and so there's how many units? Are Total being built? 50 units. 50, they're condos, right? Condo market rate units, um, priced between uh, 200 and 300,000. Various square footages, anywhere from 1,000 to uh, 17, 1,800 square feet. And Most of them are, 49 of them are uh, two bedroom, two full baths, uh, central air, etc. And we'll take a look at those in a minute. And uh, when are they going to be completed? I mean, we're still seeing construction out there and a lot of it. The model unit's complete as we're in, and uh, we anticipate occupancy for Building A uh, by the end of September, and then occupancy for Building B by the end of the year, and then occupancy for Building C for the middle of 07. That's coming up soon. Yeah. Um, how many, I mean, have you sold any already? Are There's 15 people? units out of, uh, out of the 50 that are under contract. Pretty impressive, though I can't blame them. I live in the center of town, and I enjoy all the amenities, the package store, the, the library, the town hall. Um, the concerts on the green. Concerts on the green, restaurants. Yeah. So th this is a, a great location yes. for, for condos. I think this is great. Now, who is, who, who is the uh, landlord here? The developer is a Corporation of Independent Living, uh, abbreviated CIL. Uh, they, they took on um, uh, acquisition of the building about um, nine, ten months ago, and we've been um, right on schedule to uh, complete. Very good. Well, that's enough kitchen talk. Let's take a look at the place. Sure. All right, so let's take a quick step 
to the left of the kitchen, and here we are in the dining area. Now, this uh, chandelier, is that something that comes That's a standard, standard? standard light fixture. All the units come with, uh, with this light as well as uh, all the lights that you see in this unit are, are a standard fixture. Uh, this, of course, opens to the, to the living room and the staircase in the townhouses. And of course, the kitchen. So consider more like a great room. Mm -hmm. Well, let's yeah, let's take a look at the other end of the great room. Fifteen foot ceilings. Uh, the brick was all sandblasted, and of course, it's original brick. And the timber is also original timber. And the, you, this this particular unit has fifteen foot ceilings. All hardwood floors from the point that you enter all the way down into the bedrooms. Uh, the staircase. Uh, leads to the loft in the townhouses, which is one wide open space as well. All right, let's take a look at the loft. Sure. All right, so this is another open and airy area, and it's just gorgeous. Why don't you Second walk us through? Second floor of the loft, wide open, one big room with a full bath, open rail to the down below, all the timbers exposed, all of the piping that you see here needs to stay because it's of course part of the, the construction of the building. But as you can see here, we have 15 foot ceilings as well. Mm -hmm. But there aren't any columns down below. The whole thing is held up by bolts. Those, those these bol bolted bolts into the are carrying the load from down below and transmitting the load through the, through the roof. That's great. And, uh... and, in, and here what we're entering into is the master bedroom of one of the townhouses. This one happens to have two large windows looking out onto the track side of the building and uh, also the future Irish pub. This will all be landscaped on the outside with a wrought iron fence and low, pro, ro, low profile landscaping so that uh, it doesn't obscure light. And from the other side, the, the, the side that we entered on, um, it used to be all concrete. I, it, there will be landscaping there as well? There will be landscaping, a courtyard, also carports, as well as the carports back up to um, the, the town walking trails. So it's be convenient for people to uh, walk right through the parking lot and onto the town trails. Fantastic. And here is a, uh, here's the master bathroom. It has a, has a standard package of uh, polish, porcelain tile, and a jacuzzi tub. This is a bathroom fit for a king, I have to say. So if, if, if this bathroom or other rooms in the house appeal uh, to viewers, how should they uh, get in touch? They should contact my office, which is Remax Central at 688-1115. Hi, I'm John Wavers from Invisible Gold. I'm hosting Tech Discovery once again for Windsor Today. Today we want to talk about hackers. Now, this month I actually had a run-in with ID theft. This is sort of a new experience for me, and I got to play the role of the hacker for good as I chased down the person that stole it and actually got their username and all sorts of information. And the funny thing is, talking to American Express, the, the uh, fraud department, they seem to have this misconception about what hackers were, what ID theft was. And I realized a lot of us probably do have those same misconceptions. So this week, I want to talk about what a hacker is, what a hacker does, the motivations, and maybe we could try to find one. So we're here at PC Development Group talking to Brian and Chris about viruses, hackers. These guys are computer experts. They probably grew up trying to figure out how computers worked. They probably, how, how old were you when you first built your, built your first computer? Well, I was young when I started working with them. I probably didn't build one until maybe after high school, but just working with them since I can remember. Yeah. The, the old, I had an old Tandy computer. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was the first one I remember. Um, TRS-80? Could have been, could have been. I don't remember. I don't remember the model, but that was a long time ago. Yeah. How about you? It's probably about 18. 18? Really? Okay. But you, you worked with computers. I worked with them, but didn't yeah. actually build one. So I was about 18. Yeah. Okay. Now that, the show is about hackers. What is your first experience, first memory of what a hacker is? Um, let's see. Uh, probably we were talking about the movie War Games. That was the first the first time you, you know you see something about hacking. Um, 
probably some experiences in college with people hacking the, the computer, you know, college network, hacking into other people's computers and stuff. Right. Um, so There's a few memories there. <laughs> <laughs> Who hacked into whose network here? Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, was that a hard thing to do back then? Hack into someone's account? Uh, depends on the computer. Sometimes it wasn't, sometimes it was. Um, but you can find so much information on the internet about it, um, even you know, now. So it could be hard, and then sometimes it wasn't so hard. Yeah. Mostly stealing passwords, or? Yeah, stuff like that. You know, cracking a password and, and getting through it that way. Yeah. And now, would you usually crack it with software, or just try to guess it? Uh, usually with software. You can try to guess it, but that's not usually very successful. How would you guess? Same thing, really. I mean, the only experience I've ever had is in college, you know, taking security classes to show you, you know, how people do it, you know, how to prevent it, that kind of thing. Oh. Now, Brian mentioned war games. Explain maybe for people who haven't seen war games, what kind of hacking actually happened in that. I haven't seen War Games. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll explain this. War Games was set back um, when we were pups, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, and back then, we didn't really have the internet as we do today. And a hacker was really someone that played with a cool toy like this and tried to figure out something that those big, dumb adults didn't know about it. Now, one of the things back then was we'd have modems that you could dial into. and. There were no passwords on them, probably. So one of the hacking techniques was to just dial every phone number in the phone book, trying to find a computer that would listen to you. And if it had a password, well, that was the next step. But if you knew a telephone number, so that's, that's what I remember from it. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, how could I figure out how to do this without my parents figuring it out? And I thought, this is ridiculous. Anyway. OK, so what kind of hackers do you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis at PC Development Group? Um, not that many. It's not. It's, it's 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 more. I think nowadays it's more of a fear issue with with customers than, than it is a, a reality. Um, it, it seems like the kind of hacking that goes on today is more aimed towards big websites, you know, companies, and the typical day to day home user is a needle in a haystack. You know, a hacker can't find most home users or doesn't care about it. So really, you know, people. People will, will ask us about firewalls and things like that, and it's typically a good idea to use you know, the basic Windows firewall will help a home user. Um, but you know, it is it, it is a big issue with, with people, and but I think it's more of a fear thing than it is a, a real thing. But I think that the big issue today is like you know credit card numbers and you know online security as far as that goes, emails, you know false emails and stuff like that. Good um, any last advice? You mentioned the firewall. Any last things to tell the viewing audience in winter? Firewalls. Be careful with your email. Don't open emails from you know people that you don't know. Um, that's, that's a big issue. Um, keep your Windows up to date. You know, do your all the security updates for, for Windows. That helps. Um, uh, that's that's basically it for, for day to day users. And just a plug for PC Development Group, if you need uh, your virus removal, I see it written on the whiteboard right behind there. Um, what's the number to call? 6830384 is our number here. Um, yeah, as you said, viruses, that's a big, big problem. Um, and we'll definitely take care of you. Yeah, virus removal, get you some virus, antivirus software. Uh, yeah, take care of you. Thanks, guys. standing here in front of the Archer Memorial AME Zion Church. And we're here with Pat Gardner, who is the community liaison for the church. Pat, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the Archer Memorial AME Zion Church? Sure. Actually, the, uh, the church started way back in the 1800s, the early 1800s. And initially, it was um, the first uh, person who came to this area Reverend Hatfield, who was sent to this area to be of service to the African American community. And those individuals actually came from the Hill Station area, the town uh, center, as well as the Cook Hill area. And back then, they then congregated in the Pines, what we call the Pines. 
Okay. And there was no church structure at that time, but they got together uh, for religious and social activities here. Later, in 1887, that's when the church actually was established when members of the, of the uh, camp meeting would go to, went to the town hall and actually established the Amy Zion Church. Oh wow, that's great. Isn't it one of the sites of the Freedom Trail? Yes, the Freedom Trail is a Connecticut-based uh, program, but yes, the church is a part of the Freedom Trail sites. Right. Based How many on the sites history. are there in Windsor? Okay. There are four sites in Windsor. Okay. And do, you, do you know which ones they are? Sure. Uh, again, Archer Memorial Amy Zion Church is a part of the sites, as well as um, because of the significance of uh, Sandy Archer, who was actually born into slavery in the South um, in uh, 1806. And he actually uh, ran for his freedom, and he ended up in this area. He settled here in this area. And he became an active member of this church. Um, he later then donated some uh, property or sold some property to the church so that we could have a parsonage, the first parsonage, which was actually right on Pond Road. Okay. Um, and later then, uh, through some other donations and support from community areas, uh, the church then was moved to this area, which is also property that Archer Memorial and Zion Church um, established or got from Sandy Archer. He actually sold some of his property for the church to be developed in this area. Wow, Windsor really is full of history, it isn't sure it? Sure is, yeah. I'm amazed. Don't you guys have a big event coming up in September? We do. Um, it's called the Freedom Trail. It's a recognition of the Connecticut Freedom Trail, and Windsor um, recognizes that particular effort um, by having two events. We have two events in the September, and those two events, um, one is on September 9th, and it will be held here at the church. It's a Freedom Trail celebration, all are welcome to come. We, we're very excited about that. And we really kind of uh, commemorate the history here, having a, a camp meeting and celebration here at the church. There will be gospel music and oh, wow. activities for the children, so we really invite everyone to come. The second event will be a Freedom Trail run. And again, as a way of enacting what our ancestors did to run from, from slavery into freedom. How and long is it? That particular run, it's about four miles. It's a 3.9 mile run. Oh, we better start training, Marty. <laughs> well, I don't know. Does everybody run it, or do some people walk, walk it? it? Well, what we everyone usually walk uh, runs the, the Freedom Trail, but we do have transportation right behind the runners, so they can get on <laughs> to, re to relax and rest, that. and then they can get back out. So it's very informal, but the most important thing is that we are, as a community, coming together to really celebrate that rich heritage. Where would someone from the community find out information on the event? Well, um, there are two ways. One, they can contact our church. We are listed in the uh, Windsor phone book. Mm -hmm. And also, we have uh, brochures on the Freedom Trail. We have the Windsor Freedom Trail sites and also the Connecticut Freedom Trail. Okay. Um, these brochures can also be found either at our church or at the chamber. Uh, we have them in our tourist yes. information center. Yes. You guys keep us well supplied. That's great. Well, this is a great event. I like to bring my kids out. I think it's a great learning experience. So. Although I might might be a slow trot, Pat. I'm sorry. More between a walk and a run. That's okay. <laughs> we've, we've had town officials. We've had the chief involved. We had a lot of people, children that started when they were five years old. They're now teenagers. Wow. So it's been something that we have really cherished here, and we invite anyone to come. Where does it start? It starts here at the church, okay. and it ends at our, our newer Freedom Trail site, which is the um, Riverside Cemetery, okay. which actually, that's where um, uh, members of the Connecticut 29th and 31st All Black Regiment are buried. Wow, that's great. That's really interesting. Well, Pat, we'd like to thank you for uh, visiting with us today on, uh, on Windsor Today. Okay. Nice to see you. Nice. Thank you, Pat. All right. Hi, this is Paula Pierce with Grab a Bite here at Bamboo Garden on Day Hill Road in Marshall Phelps, the plaza called Day Hill Shops. I'm here to show you this exquisite restaurant. It's a spacious, well-lit, beautiful restaurant with some excellent menu items from uh, Chinese cuisine and Japanese cuisine. Some of your old favorites like fried rice, um, chicken and broccoli, all the things that you, you think of when you come to a Chinese restaurant, and some specialties you may not have tried yet like chicken amazing, uh, dragon maki, and sushi and sashimi. There are so many things to try. I'm going to start in just a few minutes. 
And I think I hear the owner coming, Catherine Chen. Hey, Paula, how are you? Hi, doing? Catherine. Good to see you. Have a seat. Join okay. me. Thanks for inviting us here today. No problem. Can you tell us a little about uh, the specials that you offer here? Um, basically, uh, we have special running every two to three months, depends on what's on the season. Like a previous special, we had a blue chicken, blue shrimp, it was on season, asparagus, the people probably know that already. And now we just had a special uh, asparagus, uh, what do you call it? Uh, mm -hmm. egg, uh, eggplant, egg, eggplant <laughs> chicken or eggplant shrimp right now in the season. And people like it, and little spice, and it tastes great. So the specials change every two to three months depending on what What's vegetables season, and fruits yeah. are in mm -hmm. season. I heard you did blueberry recently, which sounds really creative and interesting. Was that popular? Oh, it's kind of popular. People were so surprised because, and this is the first year we do something cooking with a fruit. Oh, yeah. People probably don't even think about fruit, you're cooking with a fruit. <laughs> but it really tastes great. It sounds really good. And is it true that you can have parties here as well? Yes, we have a party room and then can fit according to like, I would say like a 20 to 40 people because our divider are adjustable. So it can be any size of group for people, so which is great. So you can accommodate all kinds of different size groups. Yes. So we're going to see some of your famous Japanese sushi dishes, I hear. Tonight, yes. Oh, great. Yeah. And you have a wide array of sushi. And do I understand correctly that sushi is not only raw fish? No, not just raw. They do have cooked stuff like cooked shrimp, um, uh, octopus, um, eel. Those are cooked stuff you can try. All, all different seafood dishes. Yeah, different type. And vegetable. And vegetable, too. Make it, make it with that. For, a lot of people are vegetarian now and people mm -hmm. care about healthy, so we create some of a vegetarian sushi for people to uh, try. Oh, okay, and other Japanese dishes include sashimi? Uh, sashimi, yeah, raw fish. Is that what sashimi is? Yeah, raw fish <laughs> itself. <laughs> yeah, no rice, just fish itself. Oh, here comes the food! <laughs> This okay. is a beautiful assortment. We actually get to try some of these delicacies? Yes. Crispy sesame chicken. Oh, sorry. It's lamb to style. The lamb to style. Oh, okay. Beautiful presentation. <coughs> Smells really good too. So it's seafood oh. and the pork nuts. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. It's one. Oh, so you. see, we have rice. We do mm -hmm. uh, white rice and brown rice, oh, so people have, can have to choose for good health. Yeah, go for good, good health. Yes. Thanks very much. What should we try first? Mm, that's her lamb. Lamb? Yep. Okay. I'm gonna try. I've never had lamb before, folks. This is a first for me. Eee. Smells delicious. Are you gonna join me? Uh, <laughs> I'm forcing her to eat her own food. Okay, here goes. Mmm. Ooh. Ooh, it's got a kick to it. It's <laughs> spicy. Yeah. That's worth the trip alone, the lamb. Mmm. I could sit here all evening and eat this. Maybe you should give us um, an idea of what's in some of the other dishes. Mm. That's a um, seafood breast nuts. They have uh, um, scallops, jumbo shrimp, mm. uh, lobster meat, and uh, crab meat. Oh, okay. Mm. Huge chunks of seafood in that one. Do you want to try a piece of that? Sure. I'll try a scallop, maybe. Scallop. Okay. Here goes. Hope all of in Windsor loves to see me. Uh, eating here. There's going to be a lot of that on Windsor today on grab a bite. Scallops, another first for Paula Pierce. Mmm. Mmm. Like it? It's very good. <laughs> You're making people hungry now. Mmm. <laughs> Again, not a seafood eater, but this is very good. Thanks for those great uh, selections. Those are really good meals. And I know that's only a small portion of your Chinese menu all, all together. 
Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed. <laughs> Thank you. Um, can I try the sushi? Oh, <laughs> hey, here it comes. Good timing. Good service here. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, let's see. Hmm. We got a caterpillar here. I'm scared. What is that? <laughs> That's a caterpillar maki. Don't oh. look like gray. Ooh, caterpillar maki. Yep. I noticed on the menu you have some interesting names like dragon maki, spider maki. Yeah. This is caterpillar maki. Yes. And here comes a rainbow. Mm -hmm. Okay, here comes your spider. Oh. Spider. <laughs> right here. Oh my gosh, that is really amazing. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. I'm only gonna eat one. Which one should I try? Mm, you never had sushi before, right? No. So let's get something cooked so you might feel more <laughs> comfortable. Thank you. <laughs> Don't try a piece of uh, this is a uh, shrimp tempura. Okay. So what we're gonna do? Got the chopsticks, of mm -hmm. course. I can't break the chops. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> and then pour the light soy sauce into the dish here. Okay. How? You usually use the spicy, okay? Spicy is good. Okay, a um, <laughs> little bit, or you like very spicy, or just very little bit. <laughs> okay. So let's put wasabi there. Okay. And mix that. Mix it with the light soy sauce. This is sushi 101 for people like me. Okay. And you can try the sauce first. See, it's spicy enough for you. You dip the sauce just dip and it. dip it and try. Mm. You need more spice? Nope, that's good. Okay. I'm good and on the spice. Got a piece of a shrimp. Okay. Like this? Yep. And dip in the sauce. I've put this whole thing in my mouth, you sound right? Yep. Okay, here goes. Mmm. Ah. <laughs> mmm. <laughs> mm. Thank you for joining us today on Windsor Today in the Grab a Bite segment. Tune in again for the next episode where we'll be at another restaurant and I can't tell you which yet. But you can go to the website and find out at windsorcc.org.